What if I told you there was a drug for men that reduced risk of heart attack, stroke, made you faster, stronger, leaner, better in bed, more creative, and clearer thinking, and reduce your risk for Alzheimer's dementia? Is that something you'd be interested in? Hey everybody, Dr. Wenzel here. Welcome to the Concierge Medicine Show. This is a show where we bring you real conversations that you need to be having with your doctor in 30 minutes or less. Welcome to episode number 14. This is a this is part two of a seven part series where we're doing a deep dive on hormone replacement therapy. Today's episode is all about testosterone replacement for men. There's a ton of misinformation and confusion around the topic of testosterone replacement for men. Yet, for 50 years, we have been prescribing this medication with great benefit. And not one study has shown, been truly shown to show harm with bioidentical testosterone replacement. Yet, hundreds of studies have been published showing clear benefit. You know, what I'm going to do for you in this show, I, ha I haven't done... Uh, yet with any of our previous shows, but I'm going to provide a lot of links in the show notes to some studies that I will be referencing in this. Um, and I, I really found it most interesting for me to approach this episode, jumping right into the data and then explaining the benefits. So, so more proving the, the statements I'm about to make are true. Uh, with people who are scientific and allow you to do your own self-study. And in my opinion, the few links that I'm going to be providing you are the best and most current studies and statements from people who are qualified to make these statements and do these studies. Um, and I hope you find them valuable. The first study I'm going to be linking to is the position statement from the AACE. That's the American Academy of of clinical endocrinologist. Uh, this was from their annual meeting in 2017, and I quote, testosterone therapy is not linked to myocardial infarction and has significant health benefits. The second study we'll be referencing is from Consultant 360. This was a study done that showed no link between testosterone therapy and cardiovascular risk. The third is the position statement from the European Medical Agency. Uh, this is the EMA equivalent in America to the FDA uh, that says no evidence of increased risk. Uh, and the last is the Mayo Clinic proceedings, which showed no increased risk, but showed benefit. I could name a hundred more of these studies, but I really feel like that's probably overkill. I've provided you these studies, which I feel are the most relevant, current, uh, and impactful for our discussion um, so that we can move forward in this highly confusing subject with a large level of confidence uh, and understand that that it is very clear. There's actually really no debate, um, yet there is one, but there really isn't. In today's show, I'm going to be giving you the five biggest myths that continue to circulate around men who take testosterone therapy. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through the biggest health benefits that you receive from replacing testosterone. And I'm going to give you a few conversations that you need to be having with your physician today about replacing your testosterone. So first of all, what is testosterone? As you know, we always like to start the show with kind of defining what we're talking about. Testosterone is a hormone. And as we've discussed, this is a part two of a seven part series all about hormones. And we're starting with um, what I consider the most um, interesting because I, I just don't understand how there's still confusion around this topic. Um, testosterone is a hormone. Uh, it's common. It's actually kind of a, a misnomer to consider it a, a, a man's hormone because actually women make testosterone in ovaries and the adrenal glands. But for the purposes of this talk, we need to focus uh, on men. And testosterone in men is made in the testes along with the adrenal glands. And it provides all of the benefits of your youth. If you think about a, a 20 year old man, um, their testosterone is through the roof. Matter of fact, nobody even measures it because it doesn't 
matter. Uh, but it's sky high. They're usually uh, 20 year olds don't struggle with weight. Usually they have energy for days. They're usually have libido that is needs to be uh, controlled or tempered because it's so high. Performance is not an issue. Uh, most 20 year olds feel like they can change and conquer the world and they set off on their adult life with every intention to do that. But then something happens around 40, 45. There's a noticeable change from that peak state. Uh, and for, for those gentlemen who, who have experienced the 55th birthday, there's a significant drop, not just a noticeable change, but there is a significant drop in deterioration of just overall strength, stamina, creativity, uh, mental clarity, uh, uh, sexual libido and performance, um, and several other risk factors like cardiovascular risk that begin to go sideways. And, and men really are left for the last half of their life trying to hang on to um, whatever level of health or strength or masculinity that they have. And this is due to a steady progressive loss in testosterone. And the only difference between a 55 year old and that 25 year old version of themselves is the level of testosterone. And so that's why we're talking about this. Um, what are the biggest myths around replacing testosterone? There have been, um, there have been a lot of uh, discussions and confusion around heart attack risk and testosterone replacement. I'm not going to belabor the debate, uh, only to say 50 years of studies has shown no direct correlation or causation of cardiac event when replacing testosterone with bioidentical testosterone. It's not there. And um, the data is resounding and clear. Matter of fact, all of the data suggest an opposite effect, that testosterone optimization through replacing of bioidentical testosterone is actually cardioprotective. Um, uh, through through uh, a series of biochemical uh, events. And um, one interesting uh, aside I feel worth mentioning is that, you know, there have been recent data to, to show there are only two things uh, that re reverse coronary uh, plaque deposit. That's the plaques in your coronary arteries, the arteries that feed your heart. One is an 80 milligram Lipitor tablet, which nobody can take because of the side effect profile. And the other is testosterone replacement, but yet that's not mainstream. Uh, what, because this is going to be a 20 or 25 minute show, I don't have the time to dig into every one of these studies. Maybe in subsequent shows, we'll go super, super deep and, and maybe do some journal review on some of these studies that are highly controversial. But as just a blanket statement, 50 years of study had inferred no cardiac risk. Uh, with using of bioidentical testosterone. Um, the second and maybe even the most inflammatory and confusing is around prostate cancer. Um, there is clear evidence to suggest that if you have prostate cancer, testosterone, whether synthetic or bioidentical, will make it worse. That is not the debate. This discussion is not about people who have active prostate cancer. People with active prostate cancer should not, under any circumstances ever in their life, take testosterone. That's active cancer. There is strong evidence in some of the most recent studies that if you are a former prostate cancer patient and your PSA is less than one, you are safe to take testosterone. I hope you caught that. Active prostate cancer, never under any circumstance should you take testosterone. However, if you have recovered from prostate cancer and you are cancer-free and your prostate-specific antigen, your PSA, is less than one, you should move forward with confidence that you are at no increased risk of worsening or recurrence of your prostate cancer. Matter of fact, low levels of testosterone have been clearly shown to put you at risk for developing prostate cancer. So the punchline here is simply this. When men's testosterone is at their highest, when they're 25, 20, 30, 27, they don't get prostate cancer. The men who get prostate cancer are men who are older, who have had a precipitous fall in testosterone, leaving them vulnerable for the development of prostate cancer. Actually having low testosterone is a risk factor for prostate cancer. So 
Testosterone does not cause prostate cancer, but it can make it worse if you have active disease. If you've been treated and are in recovery, PSA less than one, it is not a risk. So I really want to clear up this issue around prostate cancer. It is not a risk for prostate cancer. It is actually protective. The third biggest misconception around testosterone therapy is around clots, um, specifically blood clots in your leg, in your lung, and stroke. Um, there is no increased risk for these phenomena. Um, the fourth big misconception is around the need for men who are on testosterone therapy to block the conversion of excess testosterone into estrogen. One thing that you need to be aware of is that all of these hormones, estrogen, testosterone, they're all from a cholesterol molecule, believe it or not. And I'll spare you the, we talk a little bit about this in our cholesterol episode way back. Um, but here it is again, cholesterol goes through a very, very complex series of um, chemical reactions. And if you want to completely nerd out and really become educated in biochemistry, I just encourage you to Google um, cholesterol steroid pathway. And you'll see a real, really elaborate um, sequence of chemical reactions that take place to a cholesterol molecule that sends this molecule down different pathways. And one of the pathways is testosterone. The other is estrogen. But there is a conversion of testosterone into estrogen that takes place. It is common teaching to block that conversion of excess testosterone to estrogen because of poorly interpreted and poorly done studies that showed high levels of estrogen put you at risk for heart disease. The, 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 I'll save some of this information for our estrogen talk, which will be in a couple of weeks. And we will we'll go deeper into that. But what you need to know is estradiol is the estrogen that is produced by ovaries. And it is actually cardioprotective in women. This is why women who have ovaries have lower risk of heart disease and stroke than men until they're menopausal. And then we see them outpacing their male counterparts. For men, though, this testosterone gets converted to estradiol, which is the cardioprotective estrogen that comes from, estri from ovaries. I had mentioned earlier that as testosterone is actually cardioprotective. Where does that cardioprotection come from? It in large part comes from the benefit you get from the conversion to estrogen, estradiol specifically. So this notion that you need to block that conversion to estrogen is nonsense. And actually you are preventing by doing that with a medicine um, called Arimidex is the commonest medicine used. You are actually removing one of the largest benefits for even taking testosterone in the first place. It is nonsensical to block the conversion to estrogen in a man who's taking testosterone. Um, and the last is around a topic that is just baffling to me that healthcare providers, my colleagues, find it necessary to phlebotomize men who are on testosterone. Phlebotomize is where you go and you donate blood uh, so that you can lower your iron counts because what happens in testosterone, and every man, every man who takes testosterone is the, your hemoglobin and hematocrit. These are your iron, uh, these are your iron uh, containing molecules that transport oxygen in your body. They begin to rise. And for whatever reason, we have trained men to go donate blood so that they don't have a risk of having a, a stroke or a blood clot because of these high iron counts. But what baffles me is that iron doesn't make clots. Platelets make clots. And men who are on testosterone have no change in platelets. So they have just a rise in hemoglobin and hematocrit. This is actually being treated as something that we call polycythemia. But polycythemia is a dangerous condition. It's where all of your red blood cells increase, your iron and your platelets. Because of the rise of platelets in polycythemia, you are at risk for blood clots and stroke. Men who take testosterone don't get polycythemia. They get what we call physiologic erythrocytosis, which means physiologically, your body just makes more iron. It does not make more 
platelets, which puts you at no increased risk for stroke or clot formation. It's no different than a man who lives in Denver or in the Andes. If we were to pull their blood out and look at their hemoglobin and hematocrit are elevated. Men or women who smoke with COPD, their hemoglobin and hematocrit is through the roof. I see hemoglobin and hematocrits through the roof all the time. These people are at no more risk than, than I am of having a clot because of their high H and H. So I hope that's clear. There is now, listen, if you're on it and your doctor tells you, you got to do it. I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. Do your own self-study. But in my practice, I don't have any of my men phlebotomized with normal platelets. It's nonsensical. So if you're doing that, there's no reason to. So the data just isn't there. So those are the, those are the five biggest myths around testosterone therapy. Now let's talk about the most important benefits. I've alluded to several of them. We're just going to kind of rapid fire through these. And my hope is that at the end of this show, if you're not replacing, if you're over the age of 35 and you're having any symptoms of a decrease from your best self, you really need to be looking into considering testosterone replacement as a male. The first benefit is it increases sexual desire and performance. Not a real shocker. Um, it is probably one of the best antidepressants for a male over 35 years old. Um, most men go through what we call in my circle, kind of an andropause as opposed to like a menopause, menopause being the loss of estrogen and women going through that change. Men, as they begin to navigate the third, fourth, and fifth decade of their life, go through what we refer to as andropause, these symptoms, this syndrome that takes place because their body now is being deprived of the hormone that their bodies crave and desire and need the most, which is testosterone. And by a lot of these men get labeled as, you know, midlife crisis. They get labeled as kind of unmotivated and they've lost their way. They get labeled as depressed. In my experience, one of the greatest antidepressants for any man in their fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh decade beyond is testosterone replacement. They just, they feel alive all over again. Uh, the third benefit is increased lean mass and reduction in visceral fat. Visceral fat is around the belly. This is the fat that we know is unstable and highly inflammatory and linked to heart disease, stroke. And the way that it reduces this is that it increases your insulin sensitivity. And if you've been following, you know my belief around insulin and insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. Testosterone ramps up your sensitivity to insulin, thereby reducing visceral fat and your risk for all of the things that increase visceral fat puts you in the way of. Uh, it reduces heart disease. It reduces your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Listen, there are there is data clearly correlating a protective effect against the beta amyloid protein, which we find deposited in the brains post-mortem of folks who have Alzheimer's disease. There is a decrease deposition of these proteins when testosterone is optimized. Uh, next benefit is increased energy and decreased brain fog. Probably one of the commonest benefits I hear right away is, Doc, I just, I'm, I'm clear again. And most men have experienced this, this term I'm, I, I call brain fog. There is a massive reduction in that. There's a decreased risk of osteoporosis. Actually, osteoporosis is not a disease solely of women. Men do experience it. And for women, we, we, we talk about estrogen replacement, we talk about vitamin D, we talk about calcium, we talk about strength training. But the interesting little known fact is that testosterone is three times as effective in laying down and strengthening bone than estrogen is, but it never gets talked about. It lowers your uh, LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, without having any effect on HDL, your good cholesterol. Another reason why it's a risk reducer in heart disease and stroke, it flips your lipids. Um, the, uh, the next benefit is that it increases a chemical released by cells called nitric oxide. If any of you have ever watched an episode of ER or uh, maybe even been in the ER yourself with some chest pain, they give you a little tablet that dissolves in your tongue. It's called nitroglycerin. Um, that's nitric oxide. It causes massive dilation of arteries, which increases blood flow, takes away chest pain. 
in the presence of optimal testosterone, your bodies naturally will produce more amounts of nitric oxide, which will keep things dilated, which keeps blood pressure down and keeps blood flow going to the end organs, um, which is a massive benefit in reducing heart disease and stroke. Um, and lastly, testosterone that's optimized reduces uh, cytokines, which are released uh, through cells which are pro-inflammatory and cause a host of massive problems. Uh, it lowers your triglycerides and it lowers your apoprotein B, which is another super nerdy term. But if you've been living in this world of heart disease risk prevention, you want that low. I hope you can see the benefits are absolutely overwhelming. It's almost like I said in the intro of the show, wouldn't it be neat if there was a drug that could do all these things? Here it is. It's called testosterone. And men who are 35 or older and exhibiting any symptoms of what I would call andropause really need to consider looking into replacing this to an optimal level, not with synthetic testosterone, but with bioidentical, the same molecule, testosterone. Here are the conversations that I believe that you need to be having with your physician. Again, we start off with know your numbers. What are my levels? Am I normal? Am I optimal? Where am I at? You know, this normal versus optimal we talked about in last week's show. This is going to be a recurring theme through all of the seven part series because the commonest reason outside of your, the most common reason for your doctor to say you don't need hormones outside of them saying they're not safe, which is mind blowing to me because the data is so abundantly clear. That's really fueled in a lot of confusion and just misinterpretation of data and really just perpetuating negativism. Uh, you know, as a culture, we like negative things. So we just hang on to them and we, we, we make them way bigger than they really are. But, but the biggest reason a doctor who even would say, no, I understand like oh, hormone replacement therapy. I see the benefit. The number one reason that physician wouldn't allow you to pursue optimization of your hormones is because you are going to be a victim of normal. I can't stress this enough. Normal is not optimal. You got to know your numbers. You've got to really understand where you fall in the ranges of normal. I can tell you that for, uh, depending on your age, because your lab normals, uh, are, are correlated by the lab companies based on what age you are. So obviously a 60 year old's normal is going to be less than a 40 year old's normal, but that doesn't make it optimal. Our goal is to get you back to where you were at the best version of yourself. And for most men who are 40, 50, 60, that's not a testosterone of 300. Your total testosterone for most men in my private practice really need to be north of a thousand, like 1100, 1200, kind of in that range. Um, and so if you're being told you're normal and you have every symptom for andropause and your testosterone is 250, 320, I'm telling you right now that that is not enough and that you really need to be considering, um, that conversation, right? Doc, I understand that it's normal. It's low and normal. And I've got every symptom of andropause and my cholesterol is bad and my belly's getting bigger. And you know, I'm hypertensive and I'm metabolic syndrome and I've got insulin resistance or diabetes and I'm fatigued and I, I've lost all interest. Listen, you've got to get it up. I like my guys. Typically most guys feel the best above a thousand, somewhere around 1100, 1200, somewhere in there. The second thing we need to consider outside of total testosterone is this notion that most testosterone, which that total number is, is protein bound, which means it's biochemically inert. It's inactive. We really need to be paying attention to your free testosterone. And the two commonest labs used in America are LabCorp and Quest. And it is my belief that the optimal free testosterone, which should absolutely be checked along with total. Uh, for Quest is somewhere between 170, 200, 220, somewhere in there. Um, anything less than that, you may not have enough free testosterone actually at the cellular level doing work so that you feel it. Uh, for LabCorp, that number is 30 to 40. You might want to jot those numbers down. Uh, the difference between labs is really 
academic. It's the way they report those values. Uh, they, they report it in different levels. I wish it was a little less confusing, but the numbers that you need to take home are a total testosterone of somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200, uh, and a free testosterone somewhere around 170 to 200 if your physician uses Quest, and somewhere between 30 and 40 if your physician uses LabCorp. The last conversation I believe you need to be having is really around your risk profile. As I mentioned earlier in this, if you're above 35 years old and unless you have active prostate cancer or a history of prostate cancer and your PSA is still not under one, you really should be considering not only replacing your testosterone, but optimizing those levels. And you and your doctor really need to have a conversation about your prostate cancer um, history, family history. Have you had your PSA checked? Get those baseline numbers at your disposal so you really know what your risk profile is. Because in most cases, the benefits so far outweigh any theoretical risk or partial risk that it really should be discussed at length. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the show. This is a really hot topic. This is a really important topic. And for every man out there above 35, this is a huge deal. And I want the best version of you possible. And in order to do that, we've got to get your testosterone to the optimal levels, which may mean pushing you to the upper limits of normal or slightly above whatever somebody one day in the past determined was normal. We really need to start caring about the way you feel and use that as a huge barometer of our treatment. Um, as physicians, we need to do that. Um, the big take-home points are this. Optimal, again, is not the same as normal. We need to get you optimized. The benefits of testosterone are clear. 50 years of prescribing and hundreds of stories, uh, stories, studies that document benefit and really no risk. This is a no-brainer. Please like this uh, video. Please share it. Uh, if you're listening to on iTunes, uh, please leave your comments. It means the world to me. I love all the engagement. Uh, leave a review if, if, if you feel inclined. And um, I'm really looking forward to next week because it's the ladies' turn. We're actually going to be diving into testosterone treatment and replacement for the ladies. So it's their turn to tell their side of the story. I'm looking forward to diving into that until we meet again next week. Have a great week. Take care. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for watching the show. I'm sure it goes without saying, but I feel compelled to share with you. Obviously, I want to help uh, as many people as possible. Um, but before you make any medical changes, please, please consult with your physician. Don't do any of this on your own. Um, you don't want to put yourself in any harm's way. And um, again, thanks a bunch for watching the show. If you have any questions or comments, again, please leave them and we'll get back to you. Take care.